Welcome back to War Thunder, welcome back to Arcade, welcome back to the IS-6. And before you just rage in the comments about me playing the IS-6 or Arcade, there we have two gameplays in which I show, you know, a different kind of method. And that's pure bullying, and you need a very good tank. You need a tank with a lot of armor, with very effective armor, very small weak spots that are bugged or featured with optics. You need a gun that just kills. It doesn't need the highest penetration, it doesn't need the highest uh, reload rate when you have the armor and the tactic and the mobility to survive the few incoming shots. And you will not believe what I survive in this one battle up until the point that I receive a extremely lucky shot. So uh, this is just any other battle I'd say. Now I'm currently grinding. I'm grinding for a Soviet tank and you know I want fast progress. So boosters combined with premium account combined with a talisman on the or the premium bonus on the IS-6 together with the fantastic performance, not the highest tier, and I'm researching the T-55A. There are many, many vehicles that I should uh, spade, so to get the extra um, spawn or the bonus uh, RP, which is actually pretty, uh, is actually a lot at higher tiers. So, what is it about the R6 that makes it good? Well, it just performs in both modes very nicely. I have chosen Arcade for the simple reason to avoid aircraft. Aircraft as an opponent are still a thing also in Arcade. But they also can assist you. In RB they constantly swarm around you and it's just not fair to fight against rockets at any tank. To look at the symbols at all at the minimap would greatly help other IS-6 drivers, I'm quite sure, and to prioritize your targets um, is also something really nice. This Ferdinand also, you know, he never really had a chance and uh, rather fast reload for this standard 122mm gun or a variant of it, well... Yeah, and that's a Doom Barn. That's the FE4005 with the 183mm Hesh Launcher. By the way, there is a Panther on my left. I'm just skillfully ignoring him and I march on. There is the Ferdinand. I do not really fear. I have all the time in the world to properly aim, overmatch the tracks and go into the side and setting him on fire. This poor bastard seems not to have researched a fire extinguisher. Hey, mate. Get some skill, buy it. Uh, wait, uh, yeah, you see, I'm really cocky right now. And um, I just want this panther to make the crucial mistake of trying to challenge me. But uh, he knows what's coming if he, you know, does so. The Ferdinand finally um, burns down and I receive a hit from the FV4005, which I uh, kill in a return shot. And look at the damage. The track is damaged and the gun barrel uh, is uh, completely destroyed. Maybe even the gun breach and I'm down one person. So I can um, recall this guy and it seems like I'm dead because this T44 now is flanking me. But no, you know, <laughs> uh, it seems like the brigand destroyed him. And look at how long the bombs took to, you know, detonate. So, that's the next thing. I received a side shot into the turret from a 183mm hash shell. And it did not kill me. Why? So, I'm just bullying just these two guys. Quickly destroying the T44-100. Just simply bouncing the uh, long 88 from the Tiger, which I'm also bullying. I have my arcade ace. Many people say that's not really worth much. He misaims, and um, yeah, I'm still reloading. And yet, I went into this uh, 2 versus 1, which ended in a victory. Six kills right there. What is left to do? Well, spawn pressuring. You know, when you are on your way to the enemy spawn zone and you kill everything that's on your way, you can call it spawn pressuring. But you need to face the enemies and 
the advantage that you have is that you know where they must go in order to win the game. They must go for the cap zone. And here I'm a bit misaiming. And, uh, well, I just hit the engine. You know, blowing up enemy tanks with an engine shot is rare these days, at least for me. And I don't fear the long 88, but, you know, at the end of the day, if you're too cocky, you get killed more than often. And the King Tiger, for me, is more important to take down as I get more RP for it, I guess, for a heavy tank than a simple tank destroyer like the SU-100. Maybe... Maybe I should have killed them both, you know, because the Tiger 2 was crippled. However, I... Yeah, I didn't really go for it. And again, an engine did not explode on the Panther, however, he is gone, and that shot was incredible. Watch where exactly the shot enters my tank. It hits the Coppola, but not completely central. It avoids the Coppola, and the spread is, due to the uh, point where it enters, enough to kill all four crew members. However, he was set on fire. Uh, shortly afterwards and eventually killed. I thought I did not respawn in another tank, so let's have a quick look at the post battle results for a battle that took six minutes. Six minutes with eight kills, one assist and uh, one capture zone. 125,000 silver lines. Definitely arcade is the place for more silver lines. And 8,000, nearly 8,000 RP that just goes into the research of the tank that I want. I don't want to research with planes. By the way, if you use planes in arcade due to the unlock mechanism, all the kills that you um, get are um, done for or calculated as being done with the tank that you're driving so if you do a multiple strike with an aircraft you get also the premium um, reward for it but you know that was just one game let's have another bully game hey who would have thought that abandoned factory <laughs> yeah this map is just it and when you look at this gameplay please answer me the question would you have done the same amount of driving, the same reckless driving s style with another tank? Would you have done that? And look at the behavior of the enemy team. They just don't even want to challenge me at all. The IS-6 is not overpowered in the sense that it's unkillable. It's just way too easy to drive. It's just way too noob friendly, way too... You just can't get away with things with things and uh, situations that you wouldn't be able to do in, uh, you know, another tank. There is one observation that I made from the very beginning in arcade since the British were introduced. British are for RB. And RB only, I guess. Nobody drives British in arcade, except maybe 8.0 with the Chieftain in hull down locations. But... You know, I'm just casually bouncing T29 and a long 88 and goodbye sunshine and turn around and I'm waiting a bit for the reload. But the reload is still significantly faster than on your normal regular 128mm. I can try, I bounce a 100mm gun from the rear, uh, try to kill him but just hit the engine. Again it doesn't explode. Well I guess that's a good thing. And he burns, he tries to reload, and he sets my engine on fire as well. Always keep moving in the IS-6. I thought to myself, I'd have this guy with the support of the King Tiger. But had, did you have a look at the reload when I extinguished the fire? I did not have to re reload from the very beginning. But I'm still, um, you know, repairing also my engine. Somebody is behind me, but he just sees my name. He doesn't pressure. He doesn't pressure me. He could shoot me in the back of the uh, of the turret and so on. So I move around the entirety of the building while I'm still reloading, expecting nobody to come there. But oh, that's a T-34-100, a rare guest these days, despite it being a very good tank. And he bounces, <laughs> but I don't. And that's my fourth kill. So. Hmm. 
SG-100 behind me, I keep moving, pointing my front towards him, he has no, not a hash shell. That's the thing about the British, they're really dangerous for you with hash, if they hit the frontal plate and not some weird place. But nobody drives the British, in arcade at least. So that makes the I-6 so much stronger than an arcade. Because it faces regular guns with APHE that, you know, in the Yakti cannot guarantee a penetration, even on the turret front, thanks to the featured optics. I'm not ranting here, I'm enjoying it, I'm driving it while it lasts. Hopefully Gaijin will, uh, will, you know, uh, nerf this tank at some point. And did you see that? I did not ignite the ammunition. That's still a problem on the T-29 and even the powerful um, 122mm shell on the uh, IS-6 is not guaranteed to take out an IS, a, a T-29. But I can flank around, do the safe side shot and kill him at last. Then I can pressure the cap and there we go. But you know, at this point I think you know where I'm going. It's just lucky shots that are... Um, the death of the IS-6. Maybe not the death, but the crippling thing. I have no idea what this guy hit me. Even in the replay, it just showed that the shell hit the gun. And now I'm s I'm, I'm done. T-44-100, shooting my transmission, not setting me on fire, but the T-44-100 does. And then um, an aircraft crashes and the T-44 penetrates my side. But he got taken out as well by, by an airstrike, I guess. So that was two very frantic, very successful, very short battles with a huge amount of kills and as you could see also income. The IS-6 is still a bully. The IS-6 is still a tank that I love to do the power grinding stuff and believe me that I will also feature you an i6 gameplay in realistic where I do stupid stuff with it but that's a topic for another video that's it for me today so thanks for watching thanks for listening please give this video a like if it did subscribe if you want to see more and we'll see each other on the battlefields of War Thunder